Hey, Mike, just how different is this going into the draft with the number uh, 17 pick this year from past years? Uh, it's very different. Um, you know, when when you're picking as low as we are, 17th, um, you know, there's, there's just so much uncertainty about who's going to be there. So, you know, in the past, when we're picking in the top five, we're number one overall. Um, your list by about this time um, from draft from from draft day, your list is usually pared down to five players or so. Um, you know, for us, I I would say we're looking at more of ten to twelve range of guys that what we either a considering or b um, think have a realistic chance of surviving to 17 so it's just a lot of uh, much wider net of players to deep dive on nathan hey mike uh, obviously a lot's been made over the last few years about you guys not taking pitching very early how, how do you feel about that possibility this year and kind of related to that how do you feel like you guys have done so far with the pitching you have taken uh, I, I wouldn't handicap it either way. Uh, we have candidates for the 17th pick that are pitchers. We have many that are not pitchers. Um, I think it's just going to depend on um, who the very top, excuse me, top magnet on um, our uh, board is uh, when that pick rolls around, and and you know we'll we'll call them and and make sure that they are signable. Um, and it could be a hitter, it could be a pitcher. Um, yeah, clearly, look, we've we've poured a lot of our considerable draft resources into position players um, since this group has been here. Um, you know, I think we've we've chosen wisely with those guys. We're obviously mindful of the need to um, furnish a quality major league pitching staff to go with all these position players, but we're just not going to force it through the draft. Um, we think the draft picks have an inherent value and a particular value to the Orioles. Um, that we shouldn't be drafting for need. Um, and, I, you know, uh, to the latter part of your question, I think we've gotten some interesting um, pitchers with the fourth and fifth round picks that, that we've used on them so far. But obviously, you, you use higher draft picks on pitchers, you're going to get even more interesting pitchers than that if you use the picks well. So so we know that, too. I just, I just don't know how it's going to translate into this year's draft other than uh, we're trying to get the very most out of every one of these picks. Just a reminder, please enter your name in the chat if you have a question. Next up is Rich Dubroff. Hey, Mike. Um, you know, in the in the past, when you had higher picks, you went out and saw uh, a lot of the prospective picks because you, you know, there were only a, a handful, uh, and you knew you were going to get your guys. How many? Uh, how many guys have you gone out and seen, and how much of your time has been spent on uh, on scouting personally as opposed to previous years? Um, I did do it this year. Um, I, I think I've seen between eight and 10 players personally. Um, but if I'm being honest, I, I'm not sure that I'm moving the needle much in the process. Um, when we were picking really high, the top five selections that we had, um, I spent uh, as much time as possible on um, focusing on the right players for those selections just because of the weight of the decision, but also it's possible for a general manager to go see those players five times a piece or whatever is necessary to really sink your teeth into it. Uh, but just with the uncertainty surrounding who's actually going to be in play at pick 17, it's not possible. Um, on top of it, our major league teams in a much more night to night, um, active, competitive um, stance than it has been the previous drafts. And um, it just hasn't made sense for me to go out there and um, hit the road full time. I trust our scouting staff and our, our analytics department and all the people in the front office that that make these selections. And uh, if I'm out there um, kind of dabbling in the 17th overall pick, it, it can possibly cause more harm than good. So I, I go out there to see the players, to you know, meet their parents to get some feel for their situations, but um, these have not been multiple looks or in-depth looks on my part this year. Nathan? Mike, to your point about the major league team, obviously Colton arrived yesterday, Jordan the week before, Adley and Gunner have been there. How do you just feel about how this process, your guys' efforts in the draft have gone to this point in your tenure? Um, I, I, I think that we are pleased with um, the results so far from our draft picks. Um, we're not going to rest our laurels on that or act like, you know, there's not um, some degree of good luck involved 
anytime you, you you get a good draft pick. And these guys are just starting their careers. I mean, we'll we'll see where it goes. Uh, making the majors is not the end all of a successful draft pick. But yeah, I, mean, I look. I think when you look at it, um, I think we've got a sound process in place in the draft. Um, the results are, are are certainly at a level of reflecting um, some help to our our draft process, and uh, can't understate the player development end of that too. I mean, these guys have moved along and improved and performed in the minors, um, and they're not the exact same players they were on draft day. They've gotten um, healthy coaching and um, healthy character building in the minor leagues, and that's not always the case when you sign with an organization. So. Um, I am happy uh, with the um, fruits of our pipeline so far for the last four or five years, uh, but I, I'm also somebody that uh, gets paranoid about um, you know, falling behind, and um, you know we're going to continue to uh, um, try to maintain an edge with everything that we do in scouting player development. John, go ahead. Mike, you mentioned that process and 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 how the results have kind of validated that. What are some tenets of the process that you feel most strongly about have have led to the quality of players you guys have drafted and developed over these last few years? Um, I, you know, I, I've always gotten a lot of questions about uh, what we look for in the draft, and you know what what makes a good player in the draft. It's so case by case for me that it's very hard to answer it. Um, we we look at a lot of the different shapes and sizes and profiles, and uh, we rank them against one another. It's a lot of apples and oranges rankings. It makes it very tough. I think that's where uh, the professional expertise of people that have been in this business for a while comes in is how to how are you comparing a high school pitcher to a college hitter, um, there's, there's um, a certain level of scientific tools that we use for that, but also a certain level of feel that we use. And, you know, we just try to bite and sink our teeth in when we see a player of whatever shape and size that um, uh, checks the right combination of boxes in his particular case. And I mean, as an example, um, you know, college hitters, um, the ones that we've taken really high in the in the draft, uh, being Adley, um, Kerstad, and Kowser, um, you know, they're, they're different types of hitters. Adley's very patient, um, so is Kowser. Kerstad's very aggressive, uh, doesn't doesn't take as many pitches, but the the batted ball attributes drew us to him. So it's just different. Um, I think the 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 we do look for um, guys that are going to work hard, that are going to be good teammates. Um, that are going to be, um, you know, high character contributors of the organization. I think that might be the common thread. Go ahead, John. Yeah, and I guess to follow up on that last part that you mentioned, um, can you speak to the the work that the guys, the scouts on the ground, have done in kind of doing that makeup work and and everything? That, ha that you've asked of them since you came along. I know there's a lot of qualitative stuff on on the baseball side, but they're the ones who are who are getting to know these guys. Can can you kind of address the work those guys have done and the improvements maybe um, that have led to some of these outcomes? Um, yeah, I think it's a um, very important role for uh, an area scout is um, having the relationships with coaches and sort of baseball people in their region. Um, so that they can get information about what a player is like um, a, uh, off the field or away from the lines or however you want to describe it. Um, I think we emphasize it quite a bit um, in this administration, and therefore the, um, the scouts are very comfortable investing a lot of their time into that part of the evaluation. And um, you know, we try to encourage them to do so, even if it may come at the expense of um, seeing an extra game just because um, it's so important. Um, you know, we're not going to um, go a uh, hundred for a hundred in um, in assessing those qualities, um, especially because it's such a um, unscientific thing to to um, evaluate whatsoever. Uh, but I think um, the, the as much as we talk about it as a scouting staff and as much emphasis as we place on it. Um, it tends to draw it out as a priority when guys are evaluating players and 
um, so far, I, I, I would credit our group um, with uh, the descriptions of these kids kind of matching what, what we've got. 